before I go any further, I'm just going to go back into this mountain colour, the light, and then just in here, I'm going to apply some of that colour in between these shadows. So we've got some light spots in there as well. And all I'm doing, I'm just looking on the picture to find the light areas, the highlighted spots. And then I'm just popping that up in there. Should have done it first really, but it doesn't matter. We've got a bit more far apart. stronger bits here and there. So I've got the lighter bits that mixed with the liquid white and then I'm putting some stronger areas in between that. And there as well. It's really mushy in there. Same up in there. And these mountains are going to go right up to there. So I know that I want a bit of this colour, you know, all the way up, right off the canvas. Clearly, just mush that colour in. You notice I'm leaving these light areas in between. blending all this you see soon. Now again I'm going to get that same colour tone and then just under here I'm going to apply a little bit more of that in the area so it's not quite as light as it are. And back to this, just going on up in here. Do the right side first and then turn the brush over. I want to be loose though, really loose with it. Some that light in that spot, and then you can blend it right then. Just one up to now, have a little edge coming in there. A bit of dark still, you see, just to separate it. Just in there. Follow this edge and keep it quite sharp to be honest. That lead in there will help you as well, it's still there from the pencil. I'll put it a tiny bit darker. what I was trying to achieve. I keep twanging backwards and forwards between the two. Now I'm going to put that brush down and go back to my brush with the lavender colours on. I'm going to use that dark lavender first of all and then like I said I'm going to actually mix brown with it. using this lavender hue first because it's, uh, it's got a bit of a hazy day you see it's a hazy day very misty and stuff that's why I did this so light in the sky now there's a, there's a big bulb that's going on up in there so I'm just apply some of that shadow I'm working on the areas I can see on the picture the waterfall is going to just come down this area. So, in fact, I can 
Get away with doing that now. I've just got some shadow colour in there for this waterfall for where it's going to be. Put that behind it first, and then we can put some light in front of it. I'm sorry, it's dried off a bit. The waterfall needs something to contrast against. See, I'm not using acrylics here, these are oil paints. We just uh, work with them like we always do. You can easily cover over it, no props. Shoot my finger there. See, you like use your finger as a rubber. So I know that I've got some grass that's going to grow along there. That just helped me, helped me to indicate that. Not to come lower than that. So I'll just merge the two together now so when I put that waterfall in it'll have something to contrast against. I can even use a bit of black here and there. Just there now and again. So I'm just using dots at the moment and then I'll turn the brush over and just blend into them dots. Looks like just the light purple on the other side and it'll just give us a few little bits of contrast with the dark and light against that light that we're going to have on the waterfall so obviously this will be white so if you've got this dark behind it will really stand out beautifully a lot of time we do waterfalls over gesso this is slightly different working with nature when you're painting from real life you have to learn to adapt just like i am now with this lovely and rugged Really, really rugged is this this area, this place. This part here is just going to go right down. So there's a load of trees growing up the side of this. I'm going to leave some bigger gaps so that we can put some green grass into these bits as well. So there's a few areas of, of grass growing on there. Notice I'm using this lavender though with the black, blue, crimson together first. Uh, give that lovely haze and then you can put the browns and darks over the top. Right. Same up in here. Follow this on through. Yeah, you can still be loose when you're painting from real life and when you're making things realistic you don't have to be all so tight I like to paint very loose just using your reference i.e. the area and the place that you're painting to give you the feel for a place and once you've got a feel for a place like now you get into the zone and you start feeling like you, I, I'm really getting into this now. I'm rem, it's like remember making me remember the holiday that we had. It really is. Now, because I'm using the alkyl gel medium in with these paints, it's going to dry faster, therefore allowing me to go over the top easier big bonus I want my advice to everybody if you get the opportunity and you can afford to do it go get some of that alkyd gel medium for oil paints the glaze as well as a thinner it thins your paints just for a short while until it dries <laughs> it dries fast but it allows them to dry faster your paints but yet yeah, quick you can still do wet on wet with it and what I'll do is when I shut my video off it's like half an hour. I'll just give my brushes a quick clean so they don't, so it don't, the medium don't dry off on them. So I don't want to get ruined. Love my brushes and they cost too much money to be ruining. 
Now, I'm just going to go on that top edge here and there. And I'm just going to pick out a few shadows just on that top edge. Not everywhere though, again. I just want to indicate it now and again. You can even rest on that part. It needs a bit less pressure. Masking tape there, give a little shadow just up in that top part. Ah. Use both corners of the brush, remember that. Always use both corners. And a little shadow just up in there. Work with as a separator against this edge and that edge. Ah, I'm getting really happy with how this is turning out. Now there's a dark spot. It's just up in here. A nice dark area. Because you're getting a bit closer. It can be a bit darker, that's fine. Just want to check that out for contrast. evergreen trees just going on in here so for these evergreen trees I'm just going to use some of this colour first just to indicate some grass growing underneath the trees so I'm just going to put a, an area of dark for the bottom of the trees and show the angle that it's growing at basically it's all about angles and Remembering that angle for the field, so I can paint a bit of green underneath it, lighter, and then it'll give you the angles. Same there, and your trees will be just above the. That's actually going up to that point there, and then just start off. And there. Again, if you come too low on the lower part of your drawing. You just wipe it off with your finger. Your finger can be your rubber. <laughs> but I know for a fact that what I want is to get a sharp chisel edge, sharp like a knife, and I just want to use this lavender colour and go along for the, at the water's edge, just in there, and also this grassy spot. I want to go above the top of it. Just here underneath that there's some grass. Now I want it to contrast against this darker colour. Making things stand out is all about contrast. So if you can think a bit further ahead, you can save yourself a lot of pain. There. Just want to make that dark down in there. Feels marked out, some shadows put in, and then I know that tops we're gonna have evergreens, so they stand up like they saw evergreens. So I'm just gonna do it with the shadows first, just lift upwards and create little stands of evergreen tree just growing all over the place. First, I'm just gonna do it with the sh lavender shadow color, and then it's like a brownie hue. I'm just going to go over the top with that brown hue. Trying to get some colour in basically in this area.
scared of this, just go for it. I know the effect I'm after, and this is just a colour, a colour which I'm wanting to be predominant through the background. See how I'm having these little grassy areas just about showing up, just about showing through. I'm being careful not to kill all that, it doesn't matter too much because I can, can always alter it but we're wanting to get just some darks and going on in there. A bit more crimson than that. to match the darkness that I had up there. In there it wants to be a little bit lighter. Right, sweet. Now pull that brush down. In fact, that's the only fun brush I've got. Let's just get the other one and I'm gonna put that green colour in. So I'm just gonna use now a bit of lemon yellow. Small amount of blue and black just to make a green. There we go. Bit of black so it dulls it, and then some more yellow. That's it. Now, just want to use that colour and a smidgen of the yellow ochre with it. That green. And a smidgen of yellow work, but I want it to be loosely mixed. Now, just up in here where these fields are going to be, just want to indicate that colour just in there. Move one just there as well. From that, you can actually go into the shadow a bit, it's nice, it works, it helps you. These are just the fields that I'm planning and marking out. See, I know this is still going to be darker than it is now, even. So, as I planned ahead, I'm not stressing. Maybe just a few bits of green going on up in there as well. There's loose in between the trees. Right. Back to the brush with the darks on. This time I'm going to just use Van Dyke Brown in with that. See that says a lavender colour in there, mauves, blues, and let me see with Van Dyke Brown. Let's have a look at that. In fact, I might put a bit a tiny bit of white with it as well. Let's try that. Stuff in there. Uh, more white to it. You practice it first and then you can get it somewhere near what you want. Uh, indication of these that I'm after. Use a bit of this. What's it called? I'm trying to remember the name of the colour. Mars Red. Remember that. That's it, you see that? That's more like the colour that I'm chasing. Yeah. 
See that's a brownie type hue to it. So you just work, work away and you will get the colour eventually that you want and that you require. Push and mud a ridge on the fan brush and then I touch that paint actually in there and then you just lift up on it. Push, get a ridge. And then that'll take on the hue that you want in. So this lavender with that colour, a bit more white to it. Push it in and then lift up. Underneath, where the field is, leave that really nice and straight. Nice and straight, that wants to be. Underneath where that is. And we can get some darker bits there. We're just brown. Mars red, Van Dyke brown, the colours I'm using for the trees. Now, it's the same colour, but I'm following these angles all the way. Very important to do that. Lovely time of year up here in Scotland, and there's a bit of a history to it. This place. It's actually where Harry Potter were filmed. They filmed a bit of Quidditch there. And uh, I'm trying to remember what else it was. I'll tell you about it a bit later because I did write it down. Just apply some more of this Mars red. Lift up some effective trees. Let that come right down that side. I've got a load of trees under there. Again, I'm putting the lighting first with this part for these trees, and then after I go back with just the Van Dyke on the same brush which you've already got that dark colour on, uh, the light red, and then it's going to mix with it basically. I like to actually push into that and get a little ridge of the dark brown. And you can just tap it here and there, and then just pick up on it, but leave areas in between. That's it. Looks like loads, hundreds of little trees instantly. You've not done next to nothing. Excellent. I really, really love doing these pine trees, you know, the ones that are at a distance.